and you've worked on campaigns before, what's the best strategy to really resonate with voters? Because as of right now, it doesn't seem like that's really working. Authenticity will take you so far, and that's why Trump does so well. Is even though he's scandalous and he has all of his shenanigans going on, voters feel like he's a real person to them. And a lot of establishment Democrat, Democrats kind of have a persona or an image that you're trying to uphold. So, kind of letting the mask fall, show yourself as a human. People love those human mo moments that Biden has. You know, sometimes he curses, sometimes he has a little sly remark, and he gets more praise when he does stuff like that than when he tries to come out and be more robotic and stay on script. So go off script, be who you are. If you're frustrated with the way that your presidency is going, show us that you're frustrated. I think people would like to see more of that instead of feeling like they're being force fed a narrative. Something else that voters have really taken a gripe with is President Biden's age and some tactics mm -hmm. to mitigate him looking older reportedly are yeah. using no cards during meetings, a bigger font on the teleprompter and shorter stairs when he's boarding or deboarding Air Force One. What do you make mm -hmm. of these tactics and what do you say to voters who, who really have an issue that he appears maybe too old to be president? I think he needs to lean into his long history of being a politician and just say, y'all, I am old. I've been a senator and I've been representing this country for over 50 years. We can't hide it. You know, the stairs aren't going to hide the wrinkles. We know that you're old. So trying to pretend that you're not or trying to sell a different message is just, it kind of seems like a spectacle. It's not authentic. And again, that's one of the things that I believe is hurting them the most. And that goes right to your point about authenticity. And I do now mm -hmm. want to talk about perhaps a long shot, but a thorn in the president's side nonetheless, and that is Robert F. Kennedy Jr. And according to the same Quinnipiac poll that I referenced earlier, among Democrat and Democrat leaning voters, RFK Jr. has 14% to Biden 71%. I mean, mm -hmm. he's still a long shot, but what do you make of RFK Jr. as the candidate? I am confused by his candidacy, mostly because of the recent things that I've been seeing him and how the Republicans and the GOP are giving him such a platform. So I'm kind of concerned about his intentions as a Democratic candidate. I don't know if he really wants to run as a Democrat or if he's really using this to kind of bolster his political career to maybe run for a different seat later on. Um, but otherwise, I do see he's having some sort of success or he's polling decently well just because there are a lot of Americans who do want to see a different person in that position no matter who it is. I remember we talked about this poll last time but somebody on the poll literally was like they were saying Biden um, or someone else and the someone else bubble was getting more votes than the Biden himself bubble. So I feel like that percentage of him having support is just those Democrats who would rather see somebody anybody else running for president on the Democratic ticket than Biden. RFK Jr. has been under fire for anti-Semitic comments, anti-vaccine yeah. comments. Do you think that Democrats should put up a different candidate? Because like you said, a lot of people do want to see someone else. I think it would be wise to put up another candidate. And this is one of my bigger criticisms for the DNC as a whole is I don't see um, a pathway forward or a way for the party to have a very successful future if we're hitching our entire party leadership to somebody who is old and he can't have a third term even if he wants to. So building that infrastructure and party leadership is going to be really, really important over the next two, three years because when we have this thing come again, who will be the presidential nominee? We don't have any leadership to put forth. So I think this will be a good way to put some training wheels on somebody, kind of put somebody in that space to show us, hey, this is the future of our party. This is the face of what the future of the Democratic Party looks like. And there's really not anybody occupying that space right now. So I think it will be smart for them to do that. I think we're sitting at a very interesting time in politics. I mean, you could say that yes. for the past almost decade. But really, when you think of the future for both parties, we right now are technically what seems to be a 2020 rematch. So it doesn't seem like we're in the future. It just seems like we're in kind of a groundhog day for both parties. So what do you see the future of the Democratic Party looking like? 
I see them really taking their time to go state by state, or this is not, I don't know if this is what I see, this is what I hope. I hope that they go state by state and look at the existing party leaders that they have, county level, state level, um, look at the existing city council people, their state representatives, their delegates. There's a lot of people all across this country, all up and down the par uh, ballot who occupy um, seats and represent this party. So we can't say that there's no one there. There has to be somebody in these states that you can invest in and that you can build up to be the future leaders and represent us for the next decades to come. And I think they should spend their time finding those folks, training those folks up and giving them more resources. Off the top of your head, do you have anyone in mind who kind of emulates that or too soon to be, be seen? I've definitely thought about it because when I think about it myself, I'm like, who would I put as a primary voter? I personally, since I live in Texas, I love Beto O'Rourke. I think he's an excellent candidate. I think he ran a heck of a race when he was running for governor, and I wish that he had more party support. So I could see somebody like him um, becoming a future leader of the party, but I really am not entirely sure. But I really would like to see people invest into their research and see who we can find, because one way or another, we're going to have to have a future of this party. We can't just let it go when Biden um, retires. Amani, thank you for your insights. Thanks for joining me. Thank you so much for having me.